Hi everyone, Ainsley here from Small Fry Creations where we tackle everything DIY and this week we're diving into the world of lasers and seeing if as an amateur you can get up and running in one day. Let's roll the intro and see if it's possible. As you've seen in the intro, today's video is all about learning laser engraving and cutting. The great folks over at Banggood recently reached out to me and asked me if there was a product I would be interested in reviewing or testing, and I thought this was a great opportunity as I've wanted to add a laser engraver to the workshop for quite some time, and I was literally about to press go on a purchase anyway. Now, they haven't paid me for this video other than supplying me with the laser engraver, and I thought it would be unfair for me to review and test a product I have never seen in real life, nor have I ever used used a laser engraver before. So I thought this was a perfect opportunity to take you along on the journey as an amateur to see just how easy or hard it is to get up and running with laser engraving. This is the Sculfin S9 laser engraver and our first step is to get it unpacked, have a look at the parts and get it together. First things first, everything came packed really nicely in the box. Each piece was in its own little section of foam, so it means that it's probably not gonna get damaged in transit, which is good to know. I've got the instructions. They put everything in its own little package, which is kind of nice and hopefully will be helpful when I get to assembly. They have also included all of the stuff, or looks like all of the stuff that you will need to put it together. So technically, I should not have to leave this table to get this laser engraver together. So let's get it together and have a look. Let's see what it's like. The Sculfin S9 laser engraver is all put together and so far I am super duper impressed. I have nothing to compare it to, but to put this together it probably took me around about 40 minutes. And bear in mind I am filming this for YouTube, so it means I have to move the camera around multiple times. So you're probably talking somewhere around 25 minutes to half an hour to put it together. All of the screws are clearly labeled. You only really need the one tool from this bag to put it together. The instructions are in color, and to be honest, you don't even really need to read the words. Just looking at the pictures is enough to get it together, and it is really easy. We're now up to the point where we need to try and use this thing, and we need some software. And for software, I am going to use Lightburn. That's what everyone recommends. It is a paid service. There are some free ones out there, but I plan on using this quite a lot in the future, so I wanna start off on the right foot and go with the software that everyone recommends, especially because I have no experience. So I need to go and get my computer and download Lightburn onto it and get it set up and then we can have a go at using this thing. I'm just gonna put my glasses on just to be safe. Oh, this is a look I can get around. <laughs> okay, let's turn it on. Lightburn is downloaded onto the laptop. So we are now at the point where we can start using the laser engraver. And when you watch so many videos out there, everyone starts by engraving their logo onto the test material that the company sends you. Now that's great, but what settings do you use? Because I have absolutely no idea. And to be honest, when I opened up Lightburn, I was a little overwhelmed with what you can change. You can change the speed, you can change the power amongst a bunch of other settings that you can change. And really, where do you begin? So I'm gonna take it a step back. I have found a great tutorial by Gil, who runs the YouTube channel Laser Livestream. And I will link these videos that I am referencing down in the description below in the event that you wanna check them out as well. And through doing these tests, 
tests, I'm hoping I can learn A, a little bit about the laser and B, a little bit about changing the settings. What does that do and how does it affect the outcome? So I've gone ahead and get my test file all set up. A couple of safety things. Need to make sure I'm wearing my laser goggles to protect my eyes from the laser beam. And I am also going to open up the roller door to my right and I have a fan on the other side of the room that is going to blow all of the dust and fumes out to make sure that I'm in a safe environment. So if you are in an enclosed space, make sure you are taking all of your safety precautions. I'm a little excited. I'm a little nervous if I'm going to be honest with you, but the best way to learn is to get in. And we have to remember if we make a mistake, it's just proof that we were trying. So let's have a go. I finished running the test, but before we get into the results of the test, I wanna run through a couple of issues that I ran into and how I fixed them. Now, with this gantry and putting on the belts, in the instructions, it says put them on, pull them tight and screw them down, which is what I did. And then the next step, it says tilt it to a 45 degree angle and the gantry should be able to slowly move down with gravity. However, in doing that, when I turned the laser on, it would not move front to back. I could hear it getting caught and it wasn't a smooth action. After a little bit of trial and error, I worked out by just pulling the belts tight and screwing them down, it was working perfectly fine and it was a nice and smooth action. So if it was me, I would skip the 45 degree angle test. The next thing that I had issues with is when I was trying to line up my plywood, on Lightburn, you can use a function called frame, which moves the laser around, not actually on, so you can tell where it's going to burn, so you can make sure that you have your material in the right spot. And when I was doing that, it kept running in to the edges here, and I couldn't work out why that was. Turns out that you need to have the laser in its home position or zero position before you turn the laser on because as soon as you turn the laser on, that is what it registers at its home point. When I was turning it on, I had it randomly sitting somewhere and then that's what it was registering at its zero point. So when I was putting, laying things out on the bed in light burn, it wasn't correlating with what the actual laser was doing. Now that I have worked that out, the test was seamless and worked really well. So let's have a look at the results. I'll show you some close-ups of these as we go through. I followed Gill's instructions, super easy. I ran with 2,500 speed, 2,500 and all with 100% power. With this laser, the Sculfin S9, you can easily tell that it handles quite well at 2,500 and 2,000. At the 1,500 speed, you, it's quite a deep engraving and you can see a little bit of charring around the edges. So now that I have run this test and I've got a little bit of an idea of what I'm doing, it wouldn't be a laser engraving video if I didn't do my logo on the test material. So that is what I'm gonna do now. Get my logo imported into Lightburn and set that up and let's get burning. All right, I have engraved my logo onto my test material and I used the settings as per the test that we just did and Gil's tutorial and we went with 2,500 millimeters per second and 100% power. And although the logo looks quite good, there's a little bit too much charring for my liking. I wanted to see if I could dial in the settings a little more. So I dropped the speed back to 1,500 millimeters per second, still at 100% power and three quarters of the way through the cut, I could tell that was just too slow and the engraving was just too deep. So I then changed the settings once again to 2,700 millimeters per second and 80% power. And I'm not an expert as we know, but to me, that looks really good and something I would be happy with to use. So within a day, you can 100% go from having your laser in a box to being set up and engraving on material, which is really cool. But I wanna take it one step further and see how this machine cuts. The Sculfin S9 is designed to cut up to 15 millimeters thick material. So I'm going to adjust my logo so that I can cut it out. And then we're going to come back and test it out on some 15 mil basswood, as well as some three mil plywood and see what the results are. So let's jump back into Lightburn, get those settings dialed in and let's get cutting.
All right, let's see if this worked and it cut out. If I push on it, I think it's cut all the way through. It looked like it when I was watching it as it was cutting through on the camera, I could see it reflecting down onto the metal. So let's see, it worked. Check that out. That looks so cool. It looks like a cloud on the end, but that is the blade from the logo. So that was four passes, I think. Wow, that is so, so cool that it can do that. I love it. I absolutely love it. So that was on three mil plywood. So the step up from this is the Sculfin S9 should be able to cut up to 15 mils. So I think that's what this is. This is the test material that they send with the laser. I think it's basswood or some sort of soft wood. So let's give this a try. I'm gonna do exactly the same cut, but with this, but I'm obviously gonna up the number of passes on the cut setting because it'll need more. But as a starting point, that looks so cool. The offset feature in Lightburn is awesome. Love it. This has got me excited. All right, let's try on the thicker material and see what happens. All right, let's see if this worked. Yes, it has. Look at that. That looks fantastic. It's so sharp and so crisp. I'm really impressed with the laser engraver. I can't believe the stuff that it can do. Now I did measure this uh, material before I put it on the laser bed. This is 10 mil thick. It would be basswood or some sort of softwood. The Sculfin S9 is designed to cut up to 15 mil. And I don't have any 15 mil in the workshop to test that theory, but this cuts through with such ease that I would say it wouldn't have an issue going up to the 15 mil. I'm pretty sure I set the computer to do 20 passes and I was watching it cut through the camera and I reckon at around about pass 16, it was already cutting through. So I could definitely dial in those settings to be a little bit more efficient but this is so cool now before I say goodbye to you there's three tips that I want to share with you that have really helped me as I have gone through this process and I am hoping with this video and those tips if you want to go down the path of getting into laser engraving you should be able to get up and running within the day so let me switch around this stuff and we'll talk about the three tips now my tip number one is to enable the laser fire button. What this does is it turns the laser on without actually starting the project and allows you to see where the laser is on the workpiece. Now to do this, you need to go to settings in Lightburn and enable the laser fire button. And then from there, you can go to the move tab and you can set your power at 1%. And when you click that fire button, the laser will turn on and you can see where it is on the workpiece. Once you've got the workpiece all aligned, you can switch the fire button off and that will turn the laser off. Tip number two has to do with starting positions. By far, this was the thing I struggled with the most throughout this project. It took me ages to work out how the grid in Lightburn relates to the laser bed in real life. And what I mean by that is if I had a piece of plywood cut to the exact bed size, in this case, 410 mil by 420 mil, and I had my logo laid out in the center of my grid on Lightburn, by default, it was printing in the lower left corner of my workpiece, and I could not work out why that was happening. After a little bit of research, I came across a fantastic video that really simplifies the solution, and it all comes down to starting points. There are three options, but for this video, I'm going to run with two as I think that's simple and it's what I can see myself using in the future. Option number one is current position. Now, from my understanding and testing, what that means is regardless of where your project is laid out on the grid in Lightburn, it is going to print from wherever the laser is currently sitting in real life. If I switch it to option two, which is absolute position, it puts the starting point in the lower left corner, which to me makes sense because that is where the laser is sitting. So now if I have my logo laid out in the center, the laser is going to move to the center to make the cut or the engrave. Now to help me align my projects after this video, I'm gonna get some seven mil plywood and I'm going to cut it to the exact dimensions of the inside of the laser and I am going to engrave a grid onto that seven mil plywood. That will help me align my projects in the future. Tip number three is all about framing and there are two options. Option number one is using the frame method where the laser will move around the outer bounds of the project without turning the laser on or option two, which is the location option. And when you've got this turned on, you can be clicking on points on your project and the laser will respond moving to those points as you click them on the grid. 
Now, what this does is it allows you to confirm that you've got the material in A, the right spot, but also confirming that the project size will actually fit on the material that you're using. So there you have it, they're my three tips to finish off this project. And I wanna say a huge thank you to Banggood for sending me the Sculfin S9 to test. I'll leave links in the description box below to this particular laser. And in terms of price, it does move around a bit considering the exchange rate. At the time of this video, it's around about 500 Aussie dollars. Now, like I said at the beginning of this video, I have absolutely nothing to compare this to, but I am seriously impressed with the capabilities of the Sculfin S9. The cuts are clean, the prints are clean, crisp and I'm really excited to use this laser engraver in projects in the future. Now the next project for this guy is not actually going to be done on the laser, it's going to be an enclosure for the laser to sit in. We're in a woodworking shop, there is sawdust and I need to protect the laser from the sawdust so that is going to be my next project. Now I really hope that you have found this video helpful in the event that you want to get up and running with a laser engraver yourself. If you have found this video helpful or enjoyed it, help me out by hitting those subscribe and like buttons and I'll see you on the next one.